Ridgewood United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Steve Herman. I'm glad you've come to worship the Lord today. Let's worship the Lord in song together. this opportunity to worship you this day. Thank you for your care in this past year and a half or so as we've gone through this pandemic. We're so thankful for light at the end of the tunnel. Thankful it looks like we're coming to an end. Thankful that uh, normalcy might be uh, coming our way soon. And we pray your blessings upon our church as we try to uh, return to normal uh, worship and life of the church after this pandemic. So guide us through, we pray. Guide your people here, there, and everywhere, we pray. In the name of Christ, who taught us these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Caitlin's going to sing for the Lord and for us at this time.
for those who are uh, fully vaccinated. And uh, the CDC has issued guidance along those lines. So what does that mean for us? Well, uh, our church is on the road back to normalcy and we see the summer as a transition period. So we'll be gradually transitioning. Um, as of this week, uh, we are no longer required to wear a mask outdoors or indoors we've been fully vaccinated. That's the CDC guidance, that's the governor's uh, guidance. So um, that doesn't mean you have to take your mask off if you're fully vaccinated and you want to wear one because of your own comfort level, you can sure do that in person worship. Um, and the guidance for those who are not fully vaccinated is to continue to wear masks for their own protection, uh, not for the protection of those who are vaccinated. So that's where we're at. Now, children uh, under a certain age are not eligible for vaccination yet, so they, they still have to wear masks at this point for indoor um, Sunday school and worship. But I'm sure all that's gonna uh, evolve as we go through the summer. And that's why I said the summer is a period of transition for us. Hopefully in the fall, we'll be back to a, a completely uh, normal worship routine. So, that brings me to a second item. Um, this is our next to the last online worship service. Next Sunday, June 6th, will be the last service and to be recorded online. Um, the amount of people coming back to in-person church continues to increase. Uh, the numbers of those who are watching at home continues to decrease. So that's behind our decision. And, um, I know there are gonna be some people disappointed and uh, we, we are sorry that there'll be some people we're not able to continue to connect with in this way. But we'll say more about that next week. Tomorrow is Memorial Day. And I hope that uh, if you're in our area, you'll come to our cemetery service at 10 a.m. And uh, we will pay tribute to those who have given their life in service to our country. And if you're not in our area, I hope you'll go to a service like that where you live tomorrow. I want to continue to thank people for their generosity and faithfulness. Uh, we've come through this pandemic year just fine financially, and it's because of God's generosity to us through his children. 
And so we thank you for your faithfulness. All right, we're going to listen to scripture this morning. Callie's reading for us. Good morning. Today I'm reading from Ezra chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. Cyrus helps the exiles to return. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord moved the heart of Cyrus, king of Persia, to make a proclamation throughout his realm and also to put it in writing. This is what Cyrus, king of Persia, says. The Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has appointed me to build a temple for him at Jerusalem in Judah. Any of his people among you may go up to Jerusalem in Judah and build the temple of the Lord, the God of Israel, the God who is in Jerusalem, and may their God be with them. Thanks, Kelly. The last couple of weeks at our Wednesday Bible study, we've been looking at exile stories in the Bible. Uh, from the book of Daniel, from the book of Haggai, and um, those stories, as I was reading them, as I was thinking about them, I think they have a lot to offer those of us who have, in a sense, uh, been through an exile due to the pandemic, exiled from our sense of normalcy, right? And, uh, and those stories about the exile and then the return home uh, speak to us, I think. So that's what we're going to look at today. Uh, you know, the children of Israel uh, were exiled for 70 years. The Babylonians uh, came into Jerusalem in 586 BC, um, destroying the temple, taking away captives. And then it's 70 years later, uh, when uh, Ezra and Nehemiah, those books are about the people who returned to Jerusalem to rebuild the walls and to rebuild the temple and dedicate that second temple 70 years later in 516 BC. So, we're going to draw some lessons from that today, but first let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to be together um, via these online services, and we pray that you will speak to us from these scriptures of long ago about some uh, realities we experience that just don't change uh, in all of these years. So this blessing we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. So, the first thing I noticed about these stories, exile stories is that there is a really genuine sense of loss and grief involved in these stories. And I'm going to read a passage, uh, Kelly read a passage earlier to you from the exile from Ezra. I'm going to read a passage to you from Nehemiah, Nehemiah 1. Well, the word of the Lord comes to Nehemiah, Nehemiah and he says, while I was in the citadel of Susa, Okay, he's, he's away in Babylon in the captivity. Han and I, one of my brothers, came from Judah with some of the other men, and I questioned him about the Jewish remnant that had survived the exile, and also about Jerusalem. In other words, I asked him about what's going on back home? How are the people back home? They said to me, those who survived the exile and are back in the province are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down, and its gates have been burned with fire. When I heard these things, I sat down and wept. For some days I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Well, he's weeping because there's great sense of loss. Um, think about all that Israel lost in the exile. Many lost their lives in the siege and in the invasion. Uh, many lost their wealth and their property. Many lost their spouses and their children. Uh, people like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that we read about in the book of Daniel, they lost their freedom. They were taken away into exile, never to return to their homeland. The nation lost its temple, which was its identity as the people of God, the place where they worshiped. It lost its functioning priesthood. And it lost the security of the walled city and the gates of Jerusalem, that sense of security. And on and on I could go, but you get the picture. And uh, think about that. During this pandemic, have you experienced losses? I think we all have. Uh, as we said, we've lost our sense of normalcy, our sense of routine. Uh, we lost our freedom to travel, our sense of security, and uh, 
trust went away in a lot of ways. Who do we believe? What's, what's going on here? Uh, uh, what do I have to do? Do I have to lock down? Uh, you know, I remember at the very beginning, I saw pictures from China and people in China walking on the streets with masks. And I said, well, that'll never happen here. And then it did, didn't it? And then we saw pictures from Italy on TV of masses of people locked down in their apartments and hospitals overflowing and couldn't take care of uh, and people dying and being put in makeshift morgues. And I said, wow, that'll never happen here. Then it did, didn't it? And as the pandemic spread, uh, everything was shut down. We were told we were going to be shut down for two weeks. Well, two weeks turned into two months, and we were all in quite a shape, state of shock, weren't we? And then uh, the, the virus came uh, to our communities, all of our communities, and we knew people who had COVID-19. Most of them, thank God, got well. Some, it was minor, but some, it was major, and some were very ill, and some died. And some people during this past year died not even from COVID, but under the circumstances of COVID, where they couldn't be with their loved ones in their last days, they couldn't, uh, families couldn't gather normally as we would for a funeral to grieve with one another. Um, so lots of losses. We had relatives who uh, lost the sense of touch and presence with their loved ones who were in a nursing home, or maybe their grandchildren um, who were in lockdown. And many lost faith and lost hope and lived in fear. Afraid to go out, afraid to go near other people. Well, we all experience losses of one kind or another, and there is a very real sense of grief that's borne by that. And listen to that passage again I read earlier in the version called The Message. Uh, Nehemiah says, the exile survivors who are left there in the province are in bad shape. Conditions are appalling. The wall of Jerusalem is still in rubble. The city gates are still cinders. And when I heard this, I sat down and wept. I mourned for days, fasting and praying before the God of heaven. Well, did you have a time like that in your life this past year when you just felt overwhelmed by it all in the sense of loss and the sense of grief? You know, um, I've said often that grief is something we can't go around or over or under. It's something we have to go through. And uh, if you've come to that place where you've needed to pass through grief because of the losses of this pandemic year, there's nothing wrong with that. You're not alone, and it's something that we have to do. We have to go through grief when there's losses. But the exile stores talk about more than loss. They offer us great hope. They offer us hope because God is with us in our time of exile. And there are several stories that bring that out. And all of the stories have different characters and, and a little bit of plot variation, but they're really the same story. They're the story that just because the temple was destroyed didn't mean God was destroyed. Just because the children aren't in Israel anymore doesn't mean the God of Israel isn't with them. And that's what these stories are all about. And there's three of them in the book of Daniel that you're familiar with, I think, that, that make those same points. First of all, the story of Daniel and his three friends in chapter 1, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and how they are the brightest and the best, and so they are taken away in captivity to Babylon to serve the king, King Nebuchadnezzar. And they have to be enculturated. They have to learn the Babylonian language and customs. And while they're going through all that, they're given Babylonian names. And they're also going to be fed by the king's table, what they call the wine and, and uh, meats that the king's best people ate. But you know, at some point, they drew the line on how much they were going to assimilate to this culture and how much they were going to stay faithful to Yahweh. And it seems that they were unwilling to eat from the king's table, maybe because the wine had been poured out as offerings to the gods of Nebuchadnezzar and, and Babylon, uh, maybe because some of the food wasn't kosher and what, that was very important to them. But nevertheless, they weren't going to do it. And uh, they made a deal. They said, let us eat vegetables, let us eat uh, our own food for 10 days and see how we do. And at the end of 10 days, not only were they not emaciated and weak, but they were stronger than the people who had been drinking the king's drink and eating from the king's table. And so a sign again that God was with them. God was not dead. 
God was with him even in exile, even far away from the homeland. And then in chapter 3, the story of the fiery furnace. Again, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And again, where do you draw the line? This time Nebuchadnezzar has a gold statue made, and everyone is to bow down to the gold statue. Well, you know the children of Israel aren't going to do that. You know the Ten Commandments, thou shalt have no other gods before me, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images. They're not going to do it. And they tell the king they're not going to do it. And the penalty for not bowing down is to be thrown into a fiery furnace, to be burned alive. And this great passage in Daniel chapter 3 at verse 16, where Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego say to the king, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. What a statement of faith. God is able to save us, alive and well, but if he chooses not to, we're still not going to bow down, because we know it's wrong. Wow, what a tremendous statement. They, of course, are thrown into the fiery furnace, and God is with them. And an angel of the Lord protects them. And they come out of the furnace with not even the smell of smoke on their clothes, not even their hair singed. And Nebuchadnezzar says, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. See, these stories, they're all really the same story, just different characters, different circumstances. And the third one you all know as well, Daniel chapter 6, the story of Daniel and the lion's den. Now there's a new king later on, King Darius, but again, a decree to pray only to the king. And Daniel, of course, prays every day out his window facing Jerusalem to Yahweh in his homeland and to the God of his homeland. And, of course, the penalty this time, it's not going to be death by fiery furnace, it's going to be death by being thrown into the lion's den. And uh, Daniel, of course, is going to be true to God, and he, the, re the consequence is he is thrown into the lion's den. But again, the stories are the same. God is alive, God miraculously saves him, and King Darius issues this decree that in every part of my kingdom people must fear and reverence the God of Daniel. For he is the living God who endures forever. His kingdom will not be destroyed, his dominion will never end. He rescues and he saves, he performs signs and wonders in the heavens and on the earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. Wow. So the same message, uh, God is not dead just because you're in exile. The temple in Jerusalem and all the normalcy of life is gone, but God is not gone. And boy, is that a lesson for us, you know, as we're going through this grief and this loss, uh, God didn't die when the churches were shut down. Uh, God did not leave us when we had to put on masks. God did not stay far away from us when we had to social distance. God does not social distance. We were never alone, and God was with us at all times, even in our sorrows, even in our losses. And these exile stories remind us of that truth. And so lastly, the exile stories bring the children of Israel home. They return home. They're not in exile forever. After 70 years, they go back. And uh, I remember at the very beginning of this uh, pandemic, I uh, had a doctor's appointment and we were talking about the pandemic. I was talking with my doctor and he said, historically, pandemics last about 18 to 24 months. They run their course. And it looks like we're right on schedule for this one, too. Here, let me read to you from Ezra 5. Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the prophet prophesied to the Jews in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of the God of Israel who was over them. Then Zerubbabel and Joshua set to work to rebuild the house of God in Jerusalem. And the prophets of God were with them, supporting them. So 70 years pass and they begin to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem and to rebuild the temple. The walls representing their security again, the gates representing their security, and the temple representing the very presence of God with them and their ability to worship and to serve God. 
And you know, the children of Israel returned from exile better than when they left. They never practiced idolatry again. They saw the exile as a punishment for their idolatry. And you know that old saying, you don't know what you got till it's gone? Well, they appreciated their homeland more. They appreciated their temple more. They appreciated Zion and Jerusalem more. And uh, that was all part of the lessons learned in their returning home and making their future even better than their past. So, how about us? The road back to normal. Uh, have we learned anything? Are we going to be building a better future than, than our past? I think so. I think I've certainly learned not to take things for granted. Every day is a gift from God. Everything could change that you know is normal in any minute, couldn't it? Um, the things that we're beginning to do again now, I don't take for granted. Uh, the ability to work, the ability to travel, uh, the ability to come and please as we go, the freedom to worship in church again, the freedom to sit next to people, the freedom to hug people, freedom to touch again, freedom to have Sunday school and coffee hour and fellowship and family night. They're all blessings from God that I don't take for granted now. I'm very thankful for it all. And I hope you're thankful for it all. So like Ezra and Nehemiah, Zerubbabel of old, let's go forward in faith in God and let's build a better post-pandemic life together. Let us pray. Lord, we do learn from these stories in the scripture. Uh, we learn that there are losses in life this pandemic has brought and that we grieve those losses, but that we are never alone. You're with us in our losses. You're with us all the way. And that you do bring us back home. You bring us back to church. You bring us back to yourself. You bring us back to a sense of normalcy that maybe we appreciate even more than we did before. So help us build a better future now on this road back home. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. So let's join together in a closing hymn. Blessings of God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. See you next week.